Today, we're gonna talk about the thyroid. You guys keep uh, 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 asking me and the adrenals. All right, guys, today we're gonna talk about the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid axis. Roll the credits. What's up, everybody? So I get this question all the time, specifically about the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid access. So let's talk about it. So we got the, the I gotta make sure which side, that side, there it is, very confusing. So here we have a picture of the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal axis. And what you guys don't understand is how many of you, by the way, I hear everyone coming into the house. What's up, my sis? Katie's in the house, and Tanya, and Kim. Brain dump of information, I love it. Okay, so basically, you guys, um, people who think that they have like no stress in their life are tripping. They don't understand stress because stress can be bumping your elbow to opening up that bill that was too high, that cell phone bill, uh, or uh, you know, having to pay like your credit card payment, you forgot to pay it. Uh, stress can also be drinking too much water, right? Where the cells aren't able to hydrate, get the water into the body, your electrolytes are off, that's stress. Poor sleep one night, that's stress. Fighting a viral infection, that is stress. So we have to look at stress beyond just arguing with someone. And this affects our hypothalamus, pituitary, Bleep, bleep, pituitary in the middle there. Eh, well, it won't let me go over. Mm, <laughs> That's okay. <laughs> um, it's, uh, the pituitary is like the little stocky stem that's at the base of the brain that sits below the hypothalamus that is making the hormones. And you have the anterior and you have the posterior uh, pituitary. And it's holding hormones. Well, so the signal goes from the hypothalamus and it talks to the pituitary, and the pituitary in the front, the uh, anterior pituitary, because you have two, will send a signal right down there to the adrenal glands, right? And it sends, it sends cortico, what, corticotropin hormones. This is designed to your APA, APH, what is it? It's called the ACTH axis. So those signals go down to the adrenal glands to produce cortisol. Now, why are we producing cortisol? Well, we produce cortisol so we can wake up in the morning. Hello! It's a wake up hormone, but we don't want it inverted high at night. People don't seem to understand that. And uh, what's up, Lisa? And uh, so, and Mario. So, you know, you guys bump your elbow or say frack or get a troll in the live stream, and then there goes that signal between the hypothalamus pituitary down to the adrenals, like into the ribcage axis. And then eventually that's gonna affect the thyroid. So bear with me, people. I always forget to go and have the live stream on my phone so I can see how many people are joining the chat. Okay. Yes, my techie Greek guy is going to put up the count of the live stream people. So, what you guys don't know, we're, oh, it says 21, okay. So, that's, that's nice. Yeah, we can minimize it. So, essentially, a lot of people don't 
think that they're stressed. They don't even realize that a food that you eat, and if you have an inflammatory reaction to it, that can have that cortisol, the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access response. And this is to raise your blood glucose so you can, you know, get away from potential danger because our bodies don't understand bills and, you know, um, going out to the bar or getting a fight with your partner. Well, it kind of understands that, but it doesn't understand modern stresses. To the body, it's, the body thinks we're living outside. It cannot understand that we live in homes and houses and high rises and, you know, shanty towns and million dollar homes. So when you are responding to your environment, so do your hormones. And it can't see the difference between living outside. What's up from Julie from Sydney and Arlene and um, was it Michael? So from Montreal. So this is the problem. Literally, I had a consultation earlier today. I actually had a face-to-face -face consultation with a woman's like, I live near LA, so can we do something in person? I said, yes. And I was talking to her. She was doing this. I was like, and she was doing it all the time. And I was like, do you know what your face looks like right now? And she's like, what? I go, you're having a reaction that you're bothered because you have to make so many changes to your day in your life that it's projecting in your act. You're actually having a visceral, physical reaction to my words because she has anxiety, right? She developed anxiety. She didn't feel anxious at the moment, but her physical language was taking her there. And so what I'm trying to do is explain to you guys. So people who think, Hey Chuck, people who think that they're not stressed are in complete and utter denial because that thing right there, that little image next to me is going to be going off all day long. Now that signaling between the hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis ends up affect, affecting the thyroid and also that adrenal axis here is also affecting here, which I've explained or for the guys, the testes blah, blah, blah. there. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, uh, is it, is it kite, kilt, kilt kite? Hey. So this is what I want you guys to understand that you're trying to do any sort of diet. You are trying to fast or you're trying to do one meal a day, or you're trying to do keto and you're not having success because everybody keeps quantifying, adapting or weight loss. God forbid the weight loss, stupid subject as calories. You need to understand this whole little box that's put up right next to me. That's what you have to understand is parts of the body of the machine that deal with hormones. So if this is the master control center, the hypothalamus, which then affects the pituitary, which then sends, starts sig sending signals down to different parts of the body to release hormones, then that's the problem, not your calories. So I sit and I eat two, was it one curry gold block of butter is 227 grams of fat. I'm five foot three. Okay, you guys, that's where I'm sitting. And that's not even including the meat fat and all this kind of stuff. But what I have done is got to get back to work. I'll check out the replay later. Okay, Greg. Oh, Greg, Greg, Greg is the sweetest person. If you guys ever get a chance to meet him, uh, he is one of the most wonderful people I've ever, ever come to know. And he says, thank you Steph for the valuable information you share with us all to all. I highly recommend Stephanie's consultations. They, they work every they're worth every penny. So thank you, Greg. He's such a sweetheart. And I've spoken about Greg before. He had a consultation with me years ago, tried keto, fell off of it, decided, mm, I think I'll try to try this again. And then he's come back to me and um, he's been so disciplined this time and it's really, really wo working well for him. And he's constantly donating to, you know what this guy did? He bought me a freaking consultation for me to not work. Cause that's all I do. That's all I do, you guys. He literally, he literally was like, take that hour that you would do your consultation and do something for yourself. So I was just like, 
you know, I started crying. It was like, you know, who does that? So thank you, Greg. Love you. You're so amazing. Yes. Yeah, so the OMAD, the one meal a day is the dumbest thing. I mean, and people who preach it, they, they drink in that Kool-Aid. Like they will drink it like this. Just pretend this is Kool-Aid and it's got C3 parts because there's green in it. Just like my top. I got Wonder Woman C3 bra. So, um, there's good that you know, this is, there's water in here, not a green smoothie or else you'd see see-through spots on my face because I just dumped the water all over my face. Uh, so basically, um, I want to explain to you, uh, sweet tea, it could possibly sh shrink tumors. There's no guarantee, but that's a whole nother subject, brain tumors. So the whole hypothetical, because, because Rita's question about OMAD is so good when I'm talking about this here thing, uh, this hypothalamus pituitary and adrenal, and then obviously the thyroid, which I'm going to get to that. Um, you guys don't realize that every freaking stupid thing creates that, 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 uh, hormonal signaling and people who are eating one meal a day already are stretched thin with adrenal dysfunction. So now they're producing too much corticotropin steroidal hormone that releases cortisol from the adrenals. And you only really should be secreting a small amount, well, a big amount in the morning, and it should sort of slow down towards the mid afternoon. And then melatonin, which is made from serotonin will start to rise. So you guys can hibernate towards your evening, but no, you guys don't listen. You're eating one meal a day. You're doing your cardio. You're working out at night. And that cortisol that should be going back down is now going right back up. And now you have cortisol that's high at night. And that's when the adrenals start to get stressed. That's why the coin phrase adrenal fatigue begins. And uh, the signaling is off. You're just filled with cortisol, cortisol, cortisol. So people who develop all those weird hiccups like tinnitus, vertigo, thyroid, sex hormonal issues, Bell's palsy, facial palsy, like all of these things are coming from stress or the body's inability to fight off infection or viral infections because there's just too much cortisol. And if you're eating one meal a day, you guys forget that the body is like a car. You have to put gas in the tank. And if the body doesn't know how to use ketones and your glucose is too low, you can't put, if you're not in ketosis, you can't put hundred carbs or 150 carbs in your body at night because the body's like, I'm sorry, I'm trying to relax. Why are you putting gasoline in my car to drive? We we're supposed to put that car parked in the garage so I can go to sleep, yo. So that's where you guys don't understand and people keep constantly wanting to believe that this one meal a day is going to make them healthy. They forget that other part like, okay, you have candida. Okay. You've got like amalgam fillings in your mouth, you're on HRTs, you're on all these things that dysregulate your body. And then you go put another freaking stress on top of a full plate. That's about to fall off my arms. Okay. I'm not a waitress with a full plate, right? One more freaking thing in the suitcase on my back and I'm going to dump it. And so eating one meal a day is like the dumbest thing. And you guys know that it is, but the people who are so desperate to lose weight, cause y'all ain't, they can't even measure autophagy. They don't know how to do it yet. Science is only knowing the body 2%. They don't know the body very well. All of these concepts are potentials in context. Okay. It depends on the context. So if I'm going to do one meal a day because I want to experience autophagy, well, then I'm not going to live in LA. No, I'm going to move out to the mountains or to the beach where there's less smog and less stress on my freaking organs. Oh yeah. Maybe I should take this out of my ear. Uh, perhaps. Yeah. It's a problem. Okay. <laughs> um, I forgot that they're in there. Where's the other one? Always lose the second one. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm messing up my body. Yes. And so thank you, Mike. And thank you, Rita. So a lot of people will listen to 
even, you know, wonderful people that I, I mean, I really, 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 really respect Mike and his wife. I mean, I really, really do. Um, Mike interviewed me at High Intensity Health. I watch his channel because he, he interviews such interesting people. He's so smart, so smart, but he's human. He's human. And, you know, you get excited about a science and then you're just constantly pushing it and you're trying it yourself. But over time, as you get older, because I am 52 and being 52 and I have to factor in my genetic potential, right? Um, what, what are my sex hormones looking like? People are like, are you menstruating woman? People ask me if I have thyroid issues. People ask if I've had a child. People don't know, like, you know, do I drink? Do I smoke? Do I, do I not sleep? Do I, you know, refeed on carbs? Like, uh, what's the damage to my body? What's the state of my gut health? Like that matters. And we don't know what's going on in people's bodies. A lot of people don't know what's going on in their body. Blood tests can be very subjective because unless you do four in a row, you're, this is what your blood, blood is looking like today, like a snapshot, and then tomorrow it can change. So you have to think about tests as in like consistency, um, if you're testing things like your thyroid, if your TSH is sky high, that could be problematic. If you're not registering any T3, that's going to be, and that's affecting the thyroid, right? Um, cortisol test can be very, very subjective. Even if you did a 24 hour, uh, cortisol spit test, it's still very subjective. You would have to do many of them and come out with, oh, my cortisol is very, very high at night or very, very, very low, low in the morning or very, very high in the morning to get some kind of objective reading. And the problem is, is that you guys don't understand what stress is. If you work out too hard at the gym, that's stress on the body. I see you guys trying to squat too much, deadlift too much. Now I'm starting to see women do it. They're like, oh my God, I put four 35, 45 pound plates on, you know, on each side or three 45 pound plates on, and I did presses and they're really excited about that. But that's stress on the joints, right? That's stress on the joints. Deadlifting, stress on the back. That creates a CRP reaction, which is C-reactive pro protein, and your C CRP numbers can get skyrocket in one, in one moment. Or eating the wrong foods that your gut wall that's weak doesn't agree with can create that hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, thyroid access, also connected to the mast cells, which are producing histamine if you're not able to to create diamine oxidase to downregulate or to to be able to handle the amount of histamine that's that's going on and your lymphatic system is out of whack and your blood pressure is too high your blood pressure is too low or your blood sugar is too high your blood sugar is too low that's going to affect the hypothalamus and that's what you guys have a hard time understanding When it comes to intermittent fasting or eating one meal a day or doing HIIT training, a lot of you guys will do HIIT training and you'll be exhausted or you'll work out at night because you're like, that's the only time I can work out. Stephanie consultations, they are, oh, that's, that's what Greg said. Sorry, that's the old one. Um, I think if you guys look on the screen, um, my Greek guy, he uh, put up for me very generously, which I was debating if you could actually read subscribe to keto to, to subscribe to my keto course let me know if you guys can't read that because we were talking about that afterwards <laughs> the way he put it, it was like um but you can see it's the keto adrenal and thyroid uh topic for today in that corner there and below here he's put if you guys want a consultation or join the keto course and then over there is my social media there Yes. Are far away or close? All I, all I have to do is like this, and my, one of my hands will hit it, right? Uh, okay, so um, I do recover slow and very tired, so thank you for this info. You're very welcome, Mike. Um, what do you think about kefir and, uh, on a daily basis? This is not the subject of the adrenals, but I will answer that. Um... Okay, so kefir, if you guys have a gut dysbiosis, which the gut, you guys gotta understand, there's a vagus nerve that goes all the way down and communicates with the gut and goes all the way back to the brain and then that sends a signal where? Here. So the gut really is a part 
of this brain gut connection. And a lot of you guys don't know the, the strength of your gut wall. You guys don't know what's going on with your small intestine. I mean, what happens is, you know, the bacteria is supposed to be in your large intestine, but somehow it just travels right back up, right? You have bad bacteria, you have an overgrowth, and that bacteria gets shot back up into the small intestine, and then it goes into the bloodstream. And then you're having a hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid reaction. Nobody talks about this stuff in this keto nonsense. Like, I go online and I get a headache. I'm like, what is this person talking about? We're gonna talk about how to get in ketosis. Let's talk about the five best keto foods. I'm like, shut up, you idiots. I can't with this. You have to consider, if you have uh, gut permeability issues, if you have cross-reactivity, and now your brain looks at, at uh, cheese as the same as wheat, you're gonna have a hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid axis reaction, right? That's why so many people, when they eat foods that their gut wall doesn't agree with, their glucose spikes, right? Cortisol, and then adrenaline, cortisol, glucose, right? You know, to release glucose so you can deal with whatever crisis that's going on. But in the wild, you would get a break from pressure. You would get a release of pressure. So you don't need to have constant cortisol. But us idiots, stupid humans, have cortisol all day long, all day long, because we eat the wrong foods, we do the wrong things, we eat one meal, meal a day. Uh, so Katie says, none of them talk about it. They don't know. They don't know. And I was explaining this to my client. She's like, why did so many of, she's got a thyroid, hyper, she's got, okay, she's on HRTs. That's hormone replacement therapy, therapy because she was having hot flashes. Like this is everything to do with the hypothalamus. She's having hot flashes. Uh, she um, is on thyroid medication. She's been on thyroid medication for 35 years. She's 60. And I was like, and she's gone to her endocrine doctor and she's gone to many naturopathic doctors that are charging her a freaking boatload. And I'm like, and she's trying to do keto, right? So we're going over her macros and I'm looking at her macros. I'm like, your fats are too low. What the f what are you doing? She was eating teaspoons of olive oil and uh, she's teaspoons of olive oil, coconut oil, and um, avocado oil. I'm like, none of these are really ketogenic fats. You have to eat animal fats. So who gave me, oh, Rita, thank you so much, Rita. Thank you so much. Rita and Greg for donating to the Super Chat. I always forget that it's up and running until you see like them dollar signs. But thank you because it's your hard earned money and I really appreciate it. It really shows a lot of love. So uh, with that said, uh, this client that I had today, and I'm gonna do more videos on client stories because I got so many of them. I should just do videos called client stories. But um, keto failure client stories, maybe people binge on that stuff and what not to do. So she's five foot 10 and weighing, did she say 134? I said, honey, you are too thin. She's like, I know. She's like, but I can't put on the weight. I'm like, you're not eating anything. You're eating, she was eating eight ounces of protein. I'm getting women who are eating 12 ounces of protein. And I keep explaining to people, the body cannot, all you protein fanatics and you carnivore people who think you can eat a bunch of lean protein and be in ketosis are in complete denial. All you one meal a day intermittent fasters who think you can get into ketosis, yes, but when I don't eat, I make ketones. And they're like, and you don't use them. And that's not gonna happen very long because you have a rebound, a physiological insulin resistance rebound where your blood sugar starts to climb, right? Because the body's like, I'm not getting any gasoline into this tank. I'll drop the insulin and I'll, I'll spike it right back up. So, um, with this client, everything she was doing was wrong and also very much um, pushed by these people she was paying, these professionals. And I was like, your fats are too low. Now, we had already spoken on the phone. We had done a phone cons consult and she wanted an in-person consult. And I said, I had her, she started eating ghee. I said, I don't trust your body. I don't trust your gut. I don't trust your gut. She had all her lab works. I'm not a doctor. I don't like when people give me lab, lab works lab work, and I said, well, bring it to me. We'll talk about the ranges, and remember, this is subjective objectives. Now, she had done 
she had done several tests, which was kind of cool. So she had a month, every month, several tests. And some of the things that she found out was that her, um, her, all her numbers were running too high. Her iron, especially her iron, her ferritin. Um, she's worried about her calcium, but that wasn't too high. It was on the border. Um, things were running high and it's showing that she's not absorbing. I think some of her minerals were high. Sodium, potassium, one of those were high. Anyway, um, Ms. Stephanie, why do you, most guys in the gym only exercise their upper body? Because they dumb. Uh, you yeah. have one question that, uh, from Deborah, Deborah Bermudez. Yeah, I can she read it. Some... Hey, Steph, I just purchased some um, Laura Seedon. How do I know when I can stop taking it? So hold on, Deborah. Everybody's asking questions not on the subject. Just give me five more minutes, and I will uh, hit those subjects. Hey, Deborah. I just saw her. She's in the house. Um, um, Laura Seedon basically is a great thing to take, period, because it's lauric acid. It's concentrated. You travel. You take Laura Seedon. It's antimicrobial, antifungal, ant antiviral. You can take it, not take it, which is monolaurin. Um, <clears throat> and so... Getting seeking, seeking truth, truth in Christ. The hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis affects men's legs very much. Men who don't really have legs always think that it's just genetics why their legs are so skinny. They don't realize that they've gone into gluconeogenesis through this hypothalamus adrenal response. And it's the body constantly, like people who eat one meal a day, for men they take from the body, uh, the legs, right? and they start getting twiggy legs. For women, we get up in the upper body. So you have women with a big old huffed in hips, and then they'll have like little twiggy arms, and they look like little T-Rex <laughs> things, because the body takes from the upper body in women, the upper body here in the arms and stuff like that, and it distributes, distributes uh, your uh, endocrine dysfunction here. And then with men, um, often the body, when it goes into gluconeogenesis because of too much cortisol and adrenal response from the brain, hypothalamus, um, it takes from the legs. And then when guys' legs get skinny, they just think, oh, and the other stupid reason is they're lazy and the third stupid reason is because they want to fit in skinny jeans, which I think skinny guys and skinny jeans look so ugly. Today I keep seeing at the gym, I was like, stop wearing those skinny sweatpants. It's so unattractive, but I'm di digressing. So the thyroid is the, the problem at the end, the end of the bus stop. A lot of you guys who are not skipping meals and you're drinking coffee and you're running out your day, you're not breathing properly, you're don't, not standing with a straight plumb line, right? Straight plumb line. So a lot of you guys have pronated, pronated shoulders and forward neck and you're in a C shape, you're like this and there's not a, a lot of upper a lot of upper trunk circulation. So, um, a lot of people don't realize that when you also do not sleep well, a lot of you guys, and, and you're eating one meal a day, a lot of you are intermittent fasting, a lot of you guys are developing hypoglycemia. And why people don't talk about hypoglycemia when you fast, I don't understand that. It's like they just, it's like the elephant in the room, they're just not paying attention to it. Or maybe they're just not paying attention to this, right? Your blood sugar drops, what are you gonna, you're not eating, right? You're, you're not eating till 10, you might eat until, at six o'clock if you're doing OMAD, and all of a sudden, you're not feeling well, you're feeling a little tired, you're feeling a little queasy, a little shaky, and you get so caught up in that Kool-Aid of trying to get shredded and lean that you mess with everything. Ultimately, you sleep and your blood sugar regulation and your thyroid. So the thyroid is a gland in the neck that it's like a butter shape type of thing and it produces thyroid hormone that regulate the metabolism. So what's that? That's all the little things happening in your body. And some of the major parts of the body is your hair growth, your reproductive system, uh, getting blood out to the extremities, burning fat, these, this is what that, that uh, thyroid does. And when you guys do not pay attention to this, you start to have issues with this. So Deborah is reminding me because I completely 
forgot to like up the stream because we have 75 people and I don't know how many people have liked up the chat because I'm not on my phone. But it's okay, it's okay. Um, but whatever, don't forget to like up the stream because a lot of people, um, they just simply don't find me unless the YouTube algorithms see a lot of likes. I really can't wait for them to change that whole thing. They're talking about taking away likes on YouTube. I cannot wait for that. Ugh. Um, 36. 36. So we got 75 people and 36. Can we get the likes up, you guys? I don't check to see who's liking me. So I'm not, I don't know who you are, but it does help my channel and bringing people as I talk about this, right? That, that hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access and how it eventually affects the thyroid. So the thyroid is a thing that a lot of people have. A lot of women, men don't understand. Like men die from heart attacks. Women are like, what? somebody asked me, why do men die earlier than men? I'm like, and because they store all their fat right here, right? Greek guy. And they store all their fat right here. And those, that fat is literally sitting all around encased in and around your organs. But women, we get fat everywhere. We get like fat booty, fat booty, we get fat legs, we get fat arms, we get fat middle. So the, the fat is well distributed, whereas a man can have the same amount of body fat, but it's all stuck here. And uh, Yes, Deborah is also saying that my consultations are amazing, and I think they, that they are. Um, but uh, what you guys have to do to get that cortisol balance back in the morning so it doesn't affect the thyroid, because too much, if that cortisol that's high in the morning, it's got to start dropping down around 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on where you are above or around or below the equator. Hi, Stephanie. Does uh, overuse of antibiotics play a role in SIBO? Yes. I'll go into that. Maybe my next live should be about SIBO. Um, SIBO affects the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, and thyroid axis. Any type of stress on the body in any way will affect the way your thyroid goes. You know what? We need to deal with that SIBO. So I can't do 20 things at once. So let's just stop hair growth. The hair will start growing slower. It'll start thinning. Let's make your hands really cold. You know, let's get you a little constipated and let's not have a baby because we got to deal with that SIBO. And see, that's, that's what no one else talks about. People go on these diets and they're like, I'm adapted. No, you're not. You didn't deal with any of these things. You went and ate freaking cheese, fried cheese. People are eating cheese chips. Chips that are made out of cheese from sick cows and straight up casein. They already have a destroyed gut wall and then they think they're gonna adapt. It just behooves me that people drink the Kool-Aid. Okay, um, my aunt drinks coffee every day. She basically is obese and claims to be healthy because her doctor said so <laughs> exactly. She looks like she has an endocrine disease or a metabolic X uh, syndrome, yes. And that's a lot of things like our doctors, um, not all, there are some doctors that are awesome, but most are kind of dumb. They learn numbers. Let me, let me explain this to you guys, you, you people, my, my people. Doctors learn numbers. They look at numbers. Blood tests are numbers. They look at numbers before they even look at your symptoms. Because if you have SIBO, well, some of them will go and, you know, do a colonoscopy or a gas, gastro, huh? Gastroscopy. That's not how you say it. Yeah. No. <laughs> gastro is the... Yeah, I know. So. Paracolo. Okay. <laughs> it's a Greek word. <laughs> you know, right? Okay. Um, but the point is, is that often if you're just going to a doctor, if you're going to a urologist or you're going to a hematologist, you're going to a gastrologist, you're going to an endocrinologist or a, 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 um, um, a OBGYN, often before you even start going into ultrasounds and things of this nature or going into the body to look, they look at numbers. And when you look, when you learn about 
Uh, sounds like why I felt terrible on keto. Yes. So when you learn how to do things the right way, we know better to do better. That's what I'm trying to get to when it comes to the hypothalamus pituitary. Thyroid access and yes, thyroid. Doing keto can help the thyroid. It can hurt the thyroid. It's up to you. It's all this middle stuff that I'm trying to explain. So when you go to the doctor and they do a thyroid panel and it's not an endocrinologist, bad decision because they're probably not going to do a full panel. Um, you have to do about four full panels in a roll, row to establish hyper, hypo, Hashi's, or even if you have a thyroid issue. If you are hypothyroid, yes, you can help fix your thyroid. If you are Hashimoto's, it's a, more, it's a bit more difficult, but there is a way to not exist on medication. These people will throw this stuff out like they're M&Ms and y'all just take it. I can't. So when you go to the doctor, they look at numbers. You do a blood test, they look at numbers. They're not looking at the people because it's hard to carry, if you're a doctor and you got seven minutes in, if you're a naturopathic, they might start you off at a 30 minute consultation and then it's seven minutes after that. Uh, people are having you in, they're getting 40, 50 patients a day. Trust me, they don't know who you are. They don't care who you are. They're looking at numbers. Numbers go together with, okay. Numbers, thank you. Numbers go together with, um, that got me off. <laughs> He's putting something else on the screen. Um, numbers go together with, uh, uh, um, the way that you look at a person. It's number based number subscription prescription. My bad. Put it together. Next client number prescription. Next client to, cause to sit and do the deep dive and really talk to someone and go, Okay, you're having all weird symptoms. Let's start with, were you vaginally birthed? Were you a C-section baby? Okay, were you fed antibiotics before? They don't ask these questions. And that, all of those doctors, the endocrines and the, you know, the gastrologists and the urologists and all these doctors, the cardiologists, they should all know about the, all the organs. You can, what in what universe do you study one organ? How dumb is that? They're all connected. So. You know, somebody can have an ache or pain and it could be something else. And this specialized doctor won't know what to do. It, I mean, it just behooves me. The endocrine system is going to be connected to your, um, uh, oh, my brain's gone to blank. <laughs> it's going to, you're going to have to deal with a doctor who's going to deal with muscles, bones, tissue, and your skeletal system. That's just the way it is because of this whole hypothalamus pituitary con controlling the hormones to stress to the body. And if you're having dealing with a doctor that's just dealing with numbers and then a prescription, how are you going to get to the root cause of how you develop thyroid issues? Thyroid comes from stress. Thyroid comes from bad food, gut, weak what, gut wall, right? Thyroid's coming from going to bed late. What kind of job are you third shift, shift night worker? They're not making that connection. These doctors, I'm five foot 10 and 264 pounds, been doing keto for two weeks and I'm down 15 pounds, which is mostly water. Sorry. Yes. Mostly water, water, surely been doing keto according to your plan for a few days. It says a 200 grams of fat for my size. Jean, Jean, it sounds like you're a guy. Jean. You should Jean be, David. <laughs> you should be having like 250, 270, 300 grams of fat. So if you're not even hitting 200 and at 264 pounds, we have to think what's going on with your liver and what's going on with your gallbladder. Well, liver, kidney, and gallbladder. And so when you're doing a ketogenic protocol, don't look at 15 pounds of, of water loss. It's not really important. You got to think that visceral fat, is that affecting your ketone production? Is your blood sugar so far high at B264 that your endocrine system is jacked up and now the signals from your brain to the adrenals to the thyroid are having a reaction? And this is why I do these freaking videos and live streams because nobody talks about this. They talk about all the benefits of keto and all the benefits of intermittent fasting and all the benefits of um, OMAD in theory. Someone like me who's mostly healthy, not, if you take someone who's more healthy than me and younger than me, who's got a strong, strong, strong gut wall, then perhaps these crazy little science biohacking ideas of eating one meal a day and intermittent fasting might be relevant to some varying degree. 
but most of y'all out there are fracked up. So if you do keto, you have to be smart. You have to have your fats high. If your fats aren't high, you're gonna affect that adrenal reaction and the thyroid. A lot of you women who've got thyroid disorder, your fats are too low. You're eating too much protein. Protein is not an energy food. It's lower on the list. It's like fourth on the list or third. The main energy, the main two energy is gonna be either ketones or from glucose stored glycogen from eating carbs. So if you're gonna do keto and your fats are low, it doesn't matter that you produce ketones, it matters if you use them. That's what no one's talking about. What's happening to your blood sugar in the middle of the night? Are you only testing fasted? Please people, test beyond fasted. Don't just test your fasted blood sugar. It's gonna to tend to be lower because you haven't eaten all night. People have got high blood sugar, it could be a early morning dawns phenomenon. There's a lot of little moving parts that a lot of people are not considering. Okay, I'm gonna take your guys' questions. So remember, you must regulate your blood sugar, you must regulate your, your sleep and your gut wall health and your blood sugar, as I said, to have success healing your thyroid on keto. Now, Seeking Truth. Okay, why do some wrestlers and some have some subcutaneous fat, but uh, Westerners store visceral fat. Why do sumo? They got, they got visceral fat too, come on now. A sumo wrestler has visceral fat. They eat garbage to get that way. And Have you seen what they're eating? Exactly, and I don't know where you got that from, Seeking Truth. You must have saw like a documentary or something. These people eat a lot of garbage, and Asian people don't do well with too high levels of, of processed foods. Uh, medical doctors approach, or Japanese, Medical doctors approach health is a re reductionistic, not holistic. That's why they have specialists for every body, body system or an organ. Dr. Peter Giddin explains this. Exactly. It's an institution. They don't really learn about everything as they should, and that's why people can, you know, and dietitians, they're almost the worst because they have been completely brainwashed to think that the food pyramid is healthy. So they'll start uh, suggesting carbs throughout the day for diabetics or type two diabetics and it just worsens their symptoms. You're welcome, Jean, Jean, Jean. It's either Jean or Jean, but I think it's Jean because it's Sebastian David. Uh, Kiefer, okay, thank you, Harden54. Kiefer for our gut daily is okay, no. Kefir for me blows me up like that. That's what I look like on kefir, see that? That's what I look on kefir because the bacteria uh, that's growing on kefir, on the milk, that bacteria does not agree with the bacteria in my gut. And so I can't handle it. I can't do raw milk, nor can I do kefir, which kefir doesn't really have lactose. So you think I could eat kefir, I can't eat kefir. Some people do really well, most people don't. If you have gut permeability issues, you don't start with kefir, you strengthen the gut wall, then you add the kefir. So how you strengthen the gut wall is you get some sleep. You make sure your blood sugar is very stable because if you sleep at night, that gut wall that has open gaps in it will begin to shut and get tighter. So then when you add in, and you get that back it, backup of a bacteria in the small intestine. So when the gut wall gets strong again, and that the lower GI is having the bacteria, that kefir is gonna help, right, populate with good bacteria. I hope that works. Hi, somebody, thank you for the one-on-one -on -one consultation, one question. Who are you? I don't know who you are, it's okay. Um, but you're welcome. Um, let me see, YouTube Pino Zero. Um, I've been taking one teaspoon of wheatgrass juice powder daily. No, well, get rid of it. Why would you take wheatgrass? It's just poison. Don't believe this vegan dogma. Get rid of that. I think wheatgrass is an oxalate. I can't remember exactly what poison is in it. Get rid of it, fast. Uh, thank you for the great info, Harden54. You're welcome. Seeking Truth in Christ says, thoughts on strain Greek, oh, Greek yogurt. We have a Greek in the house there. Yeah. Are you a yogurt? Yeah. Okay. I love Greek. You yogurt. love Greek. How do you and, say, yeah? And the best is fage. It's the only produced in Greece. The rest are like Chobani and the other stuff. 
No, no. Okay, it's a no, no. Chobani is no, no. Um, uh, no. So seeking truth, just get rid of the, that type of dairy and even be careful with butter. The reason butter, why butter is more safe is because it's just the fat. There's no protein left in it. Um, yogurt that you buy in a store is literally, it doesn't have a lot of bacteria left in it. Just get rid of it. Cheese is the worst. Yeah, cheese constipated you and it does a lot of stuff to other people. I would get rid of the yogurt, even if it's Greek, and get rid of the cheese ASAP. Yes, get rid of that wheatgrass. Nasty. That stuff is nasty. Who's drinking? Ooh, nasty. Ew. If it's a green and it's in a juice, run. Get some garlic and a cross and run because that stuff is evil. Okay. Hey, why don't we take away this and we put up my other background as we fade slowly into going off this live stream. Can we get rid of that? Can we get rid of that? Yes, a second. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you can go to the center and fly away. Right? <laughs> um, don't forget, you guys, to like up the stream. And I do consultations. I've had a consul couple consultation people in this stream. It's definitely worth it. I have uh, different uh, packages now. Before I had one, as I was trying to fix a bunch of stuff in my life. Now we just need some music. Um, but no. Um, because I'll get a copyright strike or something stupid like that. Um, yeah. Don't forget to like up the stream, you guys. And as you can see in the different corners, you can see there is how to book a consultation of uh, join my keto course. And over here is my social media. So don't forget to go to my Instagram, which is Stephanie Ketogenic and my Facebook, but whatever. And then... Uh, this is the subject for today for the replay people. Um, do you guys have any more questions? Because we have how many people in the house? 85. 85 people. You all are quiet today. Is the chat working? Normally you guys are like killing me with questions. Greek Slovakia. Hello from Greece. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Is yeah. Somebody... He's Greek. Say something in Greek. Oh, Greek. Was it Slovak? <laughs> oh, this is a cool video, right? Yeah. Um, I was using the wheatgrass powder for energy in the morning. Don't use wheatgrass for energy. You need to fix this for energy. That whole subject of the hypothalamus to Terry. Literally, your cortisol should be very, very high in the morning. And if it's not high in the morning, then, um, yeah, it's a problem. That means it's inverted. And so you don't want to use like drinks and elixirs and things like that. You got to make sure that you guys have a strong gut wall. A lot of you guys are B12 deficient, right? Because you have low stomach acid and this is creating the inability to absorb enough B, your B12 or your B complex. That's really, really important when it comes to adrenal function. Okay, so I'm also wanted to be a dietitian, but I'm against plant-based nutrition. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Further tell the Greek guy that phage tastes the best, but I found authentic Greek yogurt at Greek specialty store. Yeah, okay. okay. For everybody that don't have access to an authentic uh, <laughs> uh, specialty store, buy phage. Okay, buy phage, <laughs> even though it sounds like a nasty word, okay. Um, <laughs> is yeast when someone kisses your cheek and their saliva leaves on the film? No, don't, don't think about that, Karen. Karen, wheatgrass is a high in oxalate and may aggravate the gluten sensitivity. Thank you, Seekin. See, I knew it was an oxalate. I got it right. Mm, 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 mm. Yes. Uh, oxalates are like shards of glass. They're like sharp needles and they deposit in your eyes, your urethra and joints, in your kidneys, your biliary system. Uh, you know, spinach, all these things have to be, almost hit my head, all these things have to be prepared <laughs> in a certain way. Um, let's see, Keto Squad, what's up, Christoph? Christoph, what is up? Uh, do you drink anything other than water? No, right now I just drink water and I was the drink crazy person. I had to have like, teas and and uh, tasty things and juices and that was me smoothies teas drinks i was never a huge coffee drinker but if it had flavor to it i was on that bitch 
Uh, now I just drink water. And I'm so used to it, I don't, I don't care anymore. I don't want food to rule me. So, ooh, ouch. I don't want any food to rule over me. I just want it to be the right texture, juiciness, and taste, and I'm good to go. Best source of fats? Um, probably from, mm, well, there's different fats for different reasons. Like the brain is really good. You guys know I got an affiliate program finally after hundreds of people emailing me. I said no to all of them except for one, which is ancestral supplements. I don't have them with me. I should. Um, and the, the affiliate code to get it cheaper is Steph Keto and they've got brain, trachea, they got trachea and they got lung and they got adrenals and they have the thyroid and they have freaking everything. They have a lot. And you will find the link in the description below yes. later. Yes, yes, I'll put that in, yes. Um, Steph Keto, life, okay, life is how do you know if you're using ketones? Um, because you, you even out, your sleep gets better, your hormones regulate, you don't crash, um, you're not hungry, but you're eating enough fat. Uh, there's a lot, I mean, it's a million things. But what is the film that I see on personal all the time? Do I need, what type is the police? I don't know what you're talking about film, Karen. You, child, you need to be more explanatory. She's talking about people kissing somebody on the cheek and you get left like some mucus, fungus film. No, don't you don't. Don't you anymore. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, Slippery Elm, Mastic Gum help with regarding uh, malabsorption. Slippery Elm is good for H. pylori, okay? This is a bacteria that is nasty. It eats at the mucus lining, the sigatory IgA mucus lining. Um, uh, life is so cool. That's cool. Uh, Slippery over mastic gum. Mastic gum is good also for. Um, so if you've got a gut wall problem because of, of um, H. pylori, then yes. Uh, what is slippery? Oh, I already read that. Okay. Um, do you work with endurance athletes? Yes, of course. It is really possible. I've done, like literally, I work with like a freaking marathon runner. Yes, took him eight months because he did not listen to my advice on how to run a marathon on keto successfully. At first he didn't listen to me, but then he did and then he, he did really well. I think he got third place or something. Is it really possible to truly keto adapt and do endurance sports? Yes, of course. Yes, sir, cyclist. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, and yes. But you, you must follow a certain protocol, it won't work. Um, let me see, amount of protein per day for a, uh, for a male. I don't know how tall you are, Sean McLaughlin. McLaughlin. I don't know. If you are like under 5 foot 10, 70, 75 will be good. If you're over 5 foot 10 and you're active, your, your body fat percent a little lower, then you could go to 85. If you're very, very tall, I'd be like 90, 95 max if you're like over six feet or 189 centimeters. Hey, Stephanie, is there any way I can contact you concerning autoimmunity? A consultation. So you guys sometimes just like to like email me and ask me questions and that makes me want to pull my eyeballs out and eat it like spaghetti. Meatball. No. If you want a consultation, then that would be better because that's how I can actually, if you think about it, it's the best way I can actually help you. That's through stephanieperson.com, which is, where is it on the screen? There, wait, there. There it is. I don't like that text color. It bugs me. It should be higher, too. I mean, people can't see it. Uh, and Deborah wrote it out for you, stephanieperson.com, in caps, so you can see the, um, the spelling of it. I have some pharmaceutical package inserts that ad uh, admit some interesting things, note, about autoimmunity. Yeah, if we spoke, you and I, like this, and I knew what was going on, what inserts you have, if, it's, uh, if you have type 1 diabetes or something else, that would be very helpful. Is the goal to get at, uh, in and out of keto easily? Well, well, it's easy to get out of keto, just have like a sip of wine, <laughs> like a piece of candy. <laughs> uh, to get into keto, it's very hard, yeah. It doesn't happen in six weeks like all this... <sighs> Like you've heard, it does not happen in six weeks. Like people say, it's, it's more complex than that. I've done it for 12 years. I haven't had a drop of sugar, um, carbs, starches, nothing. And to get a body like this, it takes a lot of, um, a lot of work. It does, I'm not gonna lie. Stuff works really, really hard. And of course you guys can gain muscle on uh, keto. You just have to learn. I'm having like 
a Wonder Woman, but we right through. Uh, let's see, life. Thank you. So oh, you're welcome. Keto delicious life. Keto delicious. Okay. Hey, staff. Uh, surgeons have told me I need to have spinal fusion since starting keto in July. My pain and inflammation has completely gone. Uh, determined not to have the surgery keto is doing me wonders. Yes, Julie. And we've got Deborah, who's moderator. She's got rheumatoid arthritis. So if she talks about inflammation and in if someone who's the expert on keto and inflammatory disease or autoimmunity, it's her. And I have a bad left knee, uh, but I've been leaning a lot on my right hip to take the pressure off of this knee. And I started wearing down my hip, the cartilage in my hip, which then the doctors were like, okay, we might need to replace that hip. So I'm starting to be a mess myself. My hip was hurting so bad. Plus I fell on it one day, long story. This woman was like running after me. I was like skateboarding with music and I was like chilling and she was running after me cause she wanted me to be in her short movie film thing. And I turned and then I hit a curb on my bad hip. And then I got scared. I actually, that night I started crying. I was like, I can't, I can't lean on my right hip. I can't stand on my left leg. I'm screwed. And uh, keto kicking in and really getting those fats high and getting sleep and doing all the other things. That pain went from 100% down to about 9%. I still have it, but I couldn't even sleep on my right side for a good X amount of years. Like, it was bad, so keto is really good for that. Uh, one uh, suggestion, though. Yeah. We need more information about why they wanted to fuse on her spine, because it might not be the inflammation. The inflammation will take away the pain, but the the spine has still may might have still the problems. So yes. So what, what the Greek guy is talking about, he used to be a physical therapist, so that's why he's, you I know. Still. <laughs> no, you're not. Yes. You're the tech guy now. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to liberate, guys. Um, but he has a lot of knowledge is what he's trying to say. And knowing the context is, he's right, to know the context is super important. Okay, can systemic candida cause malabsorption? Yes, 100%. 100%. So get that, Christoph, get that uh, candida under control. I already have existing, somebody talked about how do you fix a gut wall fusion. Had it when I was 12, that's a long time ago. Now the lumbar spine is collapsing, yikes. Um, but this person, Julie, she's already gotten the inflammation down. Her spine's already fused, it's too late. So the only thing she can do is probably deal with the, with the, um, with inflammation. And how you kill the gut walls, I kind of explained it before. You can use things like loracetin and, you know, people use uh, mastic gum or they'll use um, things like uh, 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 glutamine, they'll use bone, uh, collagen, uh, but really the gut wall will se seal when you stay away from the foods that open it. And the gut wall will seal if you get good sleep. So you don't always have to take a million products to seal that gut wall in that small intestine, make it tighter. Um, why, what ways to help malabsorption struggling with bad electrolyte imbalance? So I just explained that. And like I said, it's not like you can take a product and it's gonna help. People love to take all these different, like I'm taking, you know, loracetin, I'm taking mastic gum, I'm taking, you know, turmeric, or I'm taking, uh, you know, HCL, or I'm taking all these things, I'm taking digestive enzymes. So sometimes people who are not eating enough protein need to, need to up their red meat so they can start to develop more of the chloric acids they need to, to be able to digest the proteins. If you stay on um, enzymes for too long, it will really, taking enzymes for years, digestive enzymes for years, is one of the most dangerous things you can do to your body because your body will stop the production or lessen it, and you need really those enzymes to do their job so you can absorb nutrients from food. Candida is naturally occurring mac microorganism, but when it's out of control, it causes problems. Yes, when it turns into a fungus. So we all have, actually candida is not normal. It's, it is, wait, it is yeast, that's what it is. So yeast is the normal thing. Candida is the problem, the fungal form of the yeast and it just grows and the modern human diet makes it grow. The sweet fruits that have been hybridized, 
and selectively bred, yes, the fruits, your, even your, your friggin' berries. People, and why are you guys eating berries on keto? You can't do that. Um, I'm going through her program next month. Uh, thanks, okay. Uh, I think that's it, right? Are we good? Should we stop? We got 92 people watching now. How many likes do we got? I feel like that little plastic band is pressure putting a little like pressure port in my forehead. We have still 36. What? 36 likes. It can't be 36 likes. Now it's 37. I liked it also. <laughs> <laughs> There's 94 people in this chat. If you guys like up the stream, it really does. I hate when people use this phrasing. It's so. Mm. It helps bring the algorithm, it doesn't just help me, but it helps people be able to see me when I'm live. That's why you help like up the stream, because as you guys see, the subject that I'm talking about is not just, all right, do keto to get my keto body, just follow my three month program and get lean and shredded at 52 like I am. Okay, and if you guys want the keto booty, all you have to do is, <laughs> So, because I'm talking more about the benefits of the problem with candida is that it's destroying the bacteria balance of the gut. You just don't. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> True. Um, plain spar with sparkling water. Don't use it to hydrate yourself because there's too much air in it. People will drink sparkling all day long and be de dehydrated. I guess mine is behind. What? I missed your first comment. Sorry. Um... I see 64 now. Yeah, I think that's wrong. I think you're seeing the wrong number. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, do you well. ever meditate? Yes, I do, Camille. I do meditate. I think meditation is good. Learning how to diaphragmatic breathe. Feel that, see that, feel that out. Mm. Hold in the breath. And then when you release, you allow the central nervous system to react uh, to relax. You guys need to do more Googling about the central nervous system. You guys do need to know more about the importance of vitamin D, the toxicity of diet, vitamin D supplementation. Somebody's like trying to convince me that there are certain types of vitamin D supplementation that aren't toxic. They're all toxic, okay? Because you're supposed to get it from food and from the sun. So fix the gut wall so you can freaking absorb this stuff and don't have to worry about the biliary system dealing with that and the kidneys. I get acne from butter, ghee, lard, tallow, and lamb tallow, but coconut oil, that's not ketogenic, unfortunately, seeking truth. Why do you think that, don't say Miss Stephanie, oh, sounds like driving Miss Daisy. Just call me Stephanie. I like to keep my youth. <laughs> Eventually, super Steph. Yes, super Steph. Um, I don't know seeking truth. I don't even know your name. I don't know if you're male or woman. I don't know anything about you. I don't know if you have any gut issues. I don't know. I don't know how much fat you eat. I don't know what where you source your your uh, tallow and lard with from. I don't know if you're drinking it. I don't know if you're having enough broth. I don't know if you're eating it with your food. I don't know how much and all that matters. I'm six three, two hundred pounds, and I'm looking for looking for ten pounds more muscle. But if I eat steak, I I get high blood sugar. Oh, what what? Thank you so much. Oh, what what? I didn't know you were that tall. Jeez. Um, um, I've seen what what before in the chat. Um, the, he's the greatest example. He yeah. Uh, he's the greatest example of somebody who's six foot three, who eats. Wait, wait can I see his comment again? Uh, yeah, um, that, he's, that he's trying to gain muscle, but when he eats a lot of meat, it, his blood sugar spikes. So listen to this, what, what is very, very important. Um, oh, uh, uh, let me see, when I eat more than five ounces of steak per meal. So what, what, it's not about the protein. You're eating enough protein, that's not the problem. It's your blood sugar, your insulin is really the issue because you have to be very insulin sensitive so it only takes a little bit of insulin to then drive the protein that you're eating into the muscle cells so if you've got gut permeability issues if you have low stomach acid if you don't have enough to di digestive enzymes like pro protease if you um if you're insulin if you're not sleeping well and you become insulin resistant in uh, overnight it doesn't matter how many more calories you're going to get in there you're not going to grow more muscle so you're, without getting more fat so I need to just know a little bit more. Miss Christoph TV. 
Uh, shrooms on keto okay food. Um, I mean, it's a weird question. I know. I definitely. I'm sorry. I'm sure you probably like some mine. Yeah, thank you. It's, it, it's. I don't know why. Weed is not good for keto. Okay. When you so, smoke out, you got the munchies, and then it's very. Hard yes, to I'm keto. trying to avoid certain and certain um, words if I monetize these streams. That's why I'm not repeating it out loud. Okay. Um. Usually raw what? Beef? Is that what it is? I, I don't remember what you said. It can't be vegetables. It has to be beef or something. It's laggy. I think it's only you. Trust me, keto delicious. If it were laggy, everybody would be telling me. 80 like 8 likes. Thank you, keto delicious. Uh, oh, you mean the numbers are laggy. Got you. It's possible to get chest like Arnold Schwarzenegger naturally. If you're black. <laughs> Ah, is cooked broccoli. He wasn't even natural. I mean, that's a weird question, right? Is cooked broccoli okay for as a veggie? If you don't have a, any aversion to it, if you don't get, if you don't have a histamine response or get gassy from it, uh, raw ground beef, fifty-fifty. But I think it was grain-fed. Yeah, I don't remember your last comment because my brain's like, my knee's starting to hurt. I'm standing on the wrong hip, and I think it's time to go because the Greek guy and I got to go over a lot of stuff. What time is it now? It's we five. For one, uh, point six. Uh, it's five. five. Oh, geez. We want to talk. For, it's almost two hours. It's one, one hour. And f it's one hour. Sixteen. One, one hour six. Yeah, one hour and six minutes. Okay. All right, you guys. I hope that this was a good stream. A good stream. Don't forget to uh, hit the notification bell. Um, I'm having a problem with people. Um, when I first started doing lives, I was getting 200 people. Then it went down to 20. Really strange stuff on the YouTube algorithm. So remembering to hit the, the thing uh, and subscribe. And if you guys want certain topics, don't forget to make a comment below in the comment section. I got to go over all my videos and put in links to a bunch of stuff. And I've just been so busy. You guys know I run a course page. And it really does take a lot of time. This morning I was writing about oils, animal fat versus plant fats for cooking. And some, believe it or not, some plant fats have a higher heat point, but because they're not stable, they oxidize quickly, it doesn't even matter. So you're always gonna do better with an animal fat to cook with over any oils. And coconut oil is not, it doesn't have a high smoke point in comparison to avocado oil. So I was going over stuff like this information on the course page today, and I gotta research it, I have to write it out, and then I have to publish it, and then I've gotta get the course members to interact on it. It's a lot of work. Thank you, Stephanie, we'll join your course in addition to the one-on-one -on -one consultation. I, I don't know who you are, so you love your- find out? No, because it's a weird name. Uh, love your vids. Always tell everyone about your channel. Thank you so much. I'd be interested in hearing more about going keto. Uh -huh. uh, I always talk about this without a gallbladder. I need to create a playlist. All you have to do is take ox bile salt. You have to chew your fats really slow. Don't drink it in broth. Don't do fat bombs. Eat your fats with protein and eat really, really slow and probably take a little bit of BTA and HCL at least one cycle of it and you'll be fine. No, David, I was making a joke. Why do people take me so serious? It's a joke. He asked how to get Arnold Schwarzenegger chest who was not natural. Okay, so the guys I've seen with the biggest chest, yes, are black men. It is what it is. Yes, the biggest chest, as big as uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger's, yeah, he wasn't even natural. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a question that doesn't even work anyway. The guy's tall, I think he was 6'1". I think he's 6'1". He had a huge chest, but he was also did a ton of stuff. So why can't you get a chest? You all are triggered way too easy. Way too easy. Um, so I hope we, we got the gallbladder, I hope we got the thyroid, the adrenal, like everything makes the adrenals react working out at night, working out too hard, having a gut problem, not sleeping well. Arnold was great. Yes, he was. Everybody know Arnold was great. He still is. Well, he's, he's, his body's a little, uh, but his brain, 
his character. <laughs> He's Did, 70 years old and he has a body like, okay, he has a body. Right? Okay, well, what is her name? Geraldine Shepard? Me? No, where is she? Uh, I don't know. Geraldine Shepard, she's like in her 80s. She's like 82 now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's amazing. She puts him to shame. Yeah. Uh, you're too old to use the word triggered. No, I'm not. Have you seen the way I'm dressing? And look, I got Superman, Superwoman stripes through my boobs. David, you're tripping. I, trust me, David, I'm more than young than you are. Uh, way more young. All of the dudes in the gym that work out with me are like old men next to me, so you don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's the dumbest comment. You're too old, old for what? Have you seen the, look at the way I'm dressed. Are you kidding me? If I'm too old to say the word triggered, I need to go and change my clothing. Dude, come on. What does my cap say? Does it say Greek guy? Huh? It's a rainbow. No, it says something. Nope, it's just a rainbow. Oh, there, wait. There it is. Oh, yeah. Life is good. Chill, bro. Chill. Ernestine Shepard. That's right. I'm silly, David. You have not been following me enough to know that Steph is very s silly. <laughs> okay. 36 eggs. Uh, 36 eggs will give you, will de make you develop a freaking histamine reaction to egg whites. Like, don't do that. If you're eating too many whites, you definitely can develop an egg allergy. I'm sorry. You want to go ahead and just block this dude? Can you do that? Hide his comment? Yeah. yeah. David, you get, you're the one who's triggered. Anyway, forget about David. No, no, no. No, but people need to realize, like, they say stupid comments. David really is trying to get my attention. He likes Stephanie. Please tell your Greek friend that fage yogurt is pronounced fage or something. Fage. Fage. Why are you telling a Greek guy? <laughs> David, David. This happened last live stream. This guy was asking about these two other keto or intermittent fasting people. Dr. Berg and uh, Thomas DeLauer, and I didn't answer his question, and then Deborah like, muted or deleted his comment, and then he went over to my Instagram, freaked out on me, and you guys, David, stop. David, you clearly are young if you're saying I'm too old to use the word triggered. Now David's saying a bunch of stuff. He's tri David, I, you know you love me. You know you, know you love some of this 52-year-old. That is why David is constantly making comments that get deleted. Thomas DeLauer, yeah, his arms are big. Why is he, why are they big? All right, okay guys, thank you so much. You may want to ignore David. No, I, I'm having fun, Patrick. I'm not, I'm not bothered. I'm not triggered. I like it because every guy that starts constantly trying to make comments, they're just like, please, Stephanie, look at me, look at me. David has no profile picture. He's like, look at me, look at me, please, please, please give me attention. I didn't get enough love in my family home. Please, Stephanie, give me attention. <laughs> Thank you, what, what? You, uh, you rock and you're a Greek guy. Now go skate and ride your horse. Uh, I love horseback riding now like you guys. Well, I loved it, but now I'm doing it all the time. Wait, I gotta show this for a second. I went riding this weekend. Did somebody email me? I went riding, cause you guys know I'm thinking about leasing some horses before buying because I love LA. I really do, but I need something more. I need to connect to nature and uh, you know, riding my back bike over homeless people, slamming drugs, is getting a little old. I'm not gonna lie. And the car traffic, hold on. I love it, so fabulous. Where am I? So this is the place, you guys. And I can see it now. I'm gonna go this one. 
I am, I'm about to end the stream. Probably people are dropping off, yeah, because I'm not talking about keto. You guys want to see me? I, I'm going to upload this skate video, you guys. I'm really excited about it. Look at this, this is when I was like 22 or 3. Oh, you can't see. Anyway. This is when I broke my tooth out. But I'll, I'm going to show this later. Uh, hold on. Wait, just one second. Okay. So there I am. Riding the horsey. All right, okay, I eat raw beef ground uh, grass-fed from the grocery store, no problem so far, but people think I'm mentally ill now. Don't listen to them seeking truth. That's the thing. People are so indoctrinated to think the way that somebody, it's like the woman I spoke to today, I said, you're parroting what the doctors have told you. So let's deconstruct what they've said. Let's go to your actual symptoms and let's go back down the rabbit's hole and find out when you start to develop all of these autoimmune disorders instead of like, well, they said my numbers look like this. I was like, the numbers are relevant in certain context, and then you have to go by symptoms at the end of the day. Uh, so thank you everyone, will you look at, wait, while you look at you who's not once you, what, well, look at you? Who would, oh, and thank you, Patrick. I mean, look, you live, you're in your 50s, you appreciate life, you have your moments, you sound, sanctimonious and braggadocious and what is it uh what is it uh, pedantic and sardonic but at the end of the day it's really just important to be who you are and don't let people try to change who you are because you become very influenced off of being on a live stream or the internet you just do uh i used to eat more meat as a kid my mom would tell me it would I would get, yeah, that's what they thought. We thought that raw meat would get us sick, but if we know where our meats are sourced from, plants could get you sick. You know, there's tons of botulism, all types of stuff on plants. Nobody thinks about that when they eat a salad. I never recommend anyone do it because I do not know how it's comprised of other immune systems are, so I just do my own thing. That's, that's cool. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Have a great day, and I'm out. Because I gotta ride my bike home when it's not dark outside. Bye, because he's going to, it's about like this right now. Okay. Bye, guys. Thank you so much for joining the chat. Don't forget to sub subscribe and consultations and Instagram, Stephanie Ketogenic. Deuces.